Okay, this video is going to lay out some of the solutions for the second zebra challenges. They may seem sort of straightforward and limited, but these are some very important capabilities that you need to know to be able to move forward powerfully with zebra. Now, the first setup was just to build this little video lesson. It just required three pieces. There was a background screen image. There was a video image. And the trick there is to go to the values area and under URL, copy and paste from YouTube the URL. You just hit share, it shows you a URL, you copy it and paste it in here. You can also see that there were two buttons connected, so the button pressed on play would resume, the button pressed on pause would pause, so that gets that going. And then finally there was a, another image that was this audience. You probably should have discovered that the order in which you import these is the order in which they're stacked. If you need to change it, you can go to Arrange. We can send that to the back, so then the audience is behind. Um, so you can use these Arrange options, Bring to Front, Bring Forward, and so forth, to fix layering if the things aren't op um, imported correctly. Now the second part of the challenge was to change the whole layout of this without doing any change to the objects. And this uses a really powerful feature called object replacement. So I want to change the way that screen looks. All I need to do is get a different graphic, and I'll take Cartoon Ping. And when I drag and hover over the screen, you'll see um, crime scene tape, or construction tape, whatever that would be. And when you release, that image is replaced. Similarly, we can grab the new audience, hover over the audience image, release, and there we have a new version when we run it, it works just as you'd expect. I'm on a slow connection here, so it's not playing the video immediately. But there you have it. That's the first part of this challenge. Okay, now the second part of the challenge was having to do with alignment. Now, you were to try to get these chess pieces lined up perfectly, but your only guide was where you could line up these rooks. So the first step is to put the rooks on their respective places so the get those lined up. And now we need to try to place the rest of these things in a way without having to. So I'm going to just put them there sort of roughly. Um, this is going to go into that white space sort of. Um, and the black pawns here. King. You don't need to worry too much about where everything goes because we're going to use alignment to straighten this all up. Um, let's see, the, the knight is about there, and then we have the white king about there. Now, what's cool about the alignment is you pick all the objects that you want, and as long as you have the outside objects placed where you want, I'm just going to shift click on all these. We go to um, align, and we can distribute the centers horizontal, and that's going to even out all those pieces to be evenly in those things. And then we want to do the same thing to distribute um, the centers vertical. And sure enough, that has gotten all of them right lined up in their respective squares without you having to worry about pinpointing their location. Now the last thing, and the reason we couldn't do this, is that it required you to have only one thing in each column. Um, but now I need to get this queen to be lined up here, and I want it to be perfectly lined up with the king and perfectly lined up with that rook. So there's a number of ways to do this, and depending on how you would actually use this in a program, you, this may or may not be a good idea. But I want the vertical, I mean, the, yeah, the vertical alignment of this queen to be exactly with the king. So I'm going to bind these together. So if I take a look at the king and look at its geometry and say, you know, its distance across here, which is its x location, I want that to be the x location of this queen. And you'll see now that lined these two up, and that's saying the queen is going to be lined up with the king. And now it matters which direction you do this relationship, because the one you pull from is a value that's going to be kept and assigned to the other one. Now we're going to do the same thing to get its, its placement along that first line. So I'm going to take 
my rook and take its, in its properties the location y, which is its position in a vertical arrangement, and tie that to the location y of the queen. Sure enough, those have been found. The queen gets put in its place, and so nothing has to be guessed at. It's all very, um, very reliable. Now you could disconnect this now if you wanted to, if you were just lining up for the, its placement, or if you wanted to always be lined up with that king, then this binding would make that happen. So there's this, the, the second part of the challenge. Now we'll continue to the last part. Okay, now the third challenge had also to do with alignment, but this was more to do with how you could use properties to, to link the location of things. So we have our dial and we have our pointer. Now one thing you might think is, well, I can just um, move the pointer there, but of course, if you move the background, then everything comes apart. So we want to tie those together so they're really bound. So one first step we could do is, is say, look at our geometry of each piece, and notice there's some location x, location y, and here's location x, y, r, which is a really cool um, composite property that combines its x and y location with the, loc the rotation. So one thing we might do is just take that value and link it to the same value on the color wheel. So we're saying wherever the pointer is, put it where, where the, um, the circle is. But notice what happened. They're lined up, you know, wherever you put one, but the center of the dial is lined up with the center of the pointer. We really want the bottom of the pointer to be lined up. Now exactly what point gets lined up when you do this binding is based on where the anchor point is. Now the anchor point of the color wheel is in the center, which is good, but we want a different point of the pointer to line up with that. So if we look over here on the anchor point of the pointer, here are our options. The default is CC, which stands for center center, which means center in the um, left to right version and center in the top to bottom version. And so that's why those are lined up right in the center. We want this point down here, which is the bottom center of the hand on this wheel, to line up with the center of the wheel. So that's going to move down here to bottom center. And that will move the anchor point. So notice now, those are, um, those are lined up. And so wherever I move the color wheel, that hand and the spinner is right on it. Now the other thing we want to do is make sure that this pointer can be rotatable because that's we've got the alignment solved but now we need to have it so that I can spin that um, that hand. That's part of the actions and you want to go to rotatable and when it's marked false it means the learner even though you can rotate it as an author when you play this Nothing happens. So we want to set on the properties of that pointer, we want to say rotatable true. And as soon as we do this, I can rotate the pointer and notice that the color wheel is, is rotating right along with it. Now the reason for that is that not only have we bound the location in the x and y direction of the pointer to the color wheel. In doing location x, y, r, that's also binding the rotation. So that as I rotate the pointer, it's going to, the x, y is going to stay the same because those are linked by um, being the same value and the rotation will be the same. So as I move, as I move the um, pointer, the circle rotates as well. Now to change that is a very simple difference because we don't want to bind the rotation. We just want to bind the X and Y dimensions. So if we look at additional properties, you see there's a location X and location Y. So I'm going to change this wiring to say instead of location X, Y, R, I want to bind location X on the pointer to location X on the color wheel. Similarly, I want to take location Y on the color wheel to 
the location y on the pointer. And now this will keep the, the um, pointer lined up appropriately, but the rotation of the pointer will not affect the rotation of the color wheel. So let's try that. Sure enough, now you get the um, alignment of the anchor point to be the same. You know, it's the bottom of our pointer is lining up with the center of the circle, but because of the rotation is abound, as I turn this pointer, the underlying image doesn't change. So again, really important, but small things. I hope it doesn't, wasn't too disappointing this week. You're going to have more challenges next week. But um, this was just wanting to make sure you are aware of how some of these really important controls and basic wiring principles work in terms of how objects you create relate to each other. Okay, well, study this up and then come back in a few days and we'll have a third, um, a third challenge for you.